Iran vows revenge. Iran, you know Iran, right? This is Iran. They vow revenge against who? Against Israel. What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day. Thank you very much for choosing us again. I'm Zach. I'm sure we're going to like each other. I don't know who you are, but sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for stopping. There's a button here. I think it's called subscribe. We talk about many things here. We talk about Africa. We talk about our people. We talk about the diaspora. We talk about the world, geopolitics, family, travel, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, all over the place, South Africa. Thank you very much for choosing us. If you're from America, thank you for being here. Caribbeans, the UK, Brazil, we are family. Please click on the button subscribe so you can see each other further. So today we're talking about Iran. This is Iran. Iran is not a good friend of America, certainly not a friend of Israel. Iran has vowed revenge. What's revenge for? Israel conducted an attack where they took out one of the most prominent Iranian commanders. This happened in Syria. Was this in combat situation? No, it wasn't. Why? The airstrike took place on a diplomatic building. Yes, an embassy, a consulate in Syria. Israeli intelligence certainly knew that something was happening in that building. They struck the building, taking out one of the most prominent Iranian commanders. And Iran is not very happy about this. Is this legal? Well, according to the international laws, not really. You cannot take out any embassy or consulate because it's representative of a country. The consulate building in any country does not belong to the host country. Let me give you a practical example. The American consulate in South Africa does not belong to South Africa. That piece of land is considered as America, not South Africa. So nor the police, nor the secret service, nobody can actually cross that line. Because by crossing that line, that basically means you've just entered the United States of America, where the laws are completely different. So by Israel attacking that consulate, in other words, it means Israel has attacked Iran on Iran soil. Iran vows revenge as it accuses Israel of deadly airstruck on, on Syria consulate in deepening Middle East crisis. The airstruck destroyed the consulate building in the capital Damascus, killing at least seven officials, including Mohammed Reza Zahidi, a top commander in Iran's elite revolutionary guard, and senior commander Mohammed Hadi Haji Rahimi, according to Iran's foreign ministry. So these are very important people in Iran army that Israelis were targeting. Let me get through back to track. Israel is not a very good friend of Iran. They've never been friends, not for a long time at least. If you want more information about it, you can find out on YouTube or many other videos. The situation in Israel in some way determines the stance of Iran against Israel because Iran supports Palestinians while Israel are not very good friends with Palestinians. Iran also sponsors many groups of people that do not necessarily like Israel with weapons and fundings and money. So Israel sees Iran as certainly one of its biggest enemies. Now, if they get an opportunity to attack or take out one of the top generals of Iran, will they do it or not? Big question mark. Now, is this valid? Can you do this in this situation? Targeting a consulate that has never been done before. Now, who is the target? Zahidi is the most high-profile Iran target killed since the U.S. President Donald Trump ordered assassination of the IRCG General Qasim Soleimani in Baghdad. There was another general of Iran that was taken out by the order of Donald Trump, and that's almost created a big war. Now, some questions were asked by Israel soldiers by CNN. They say Israeli military doesn't comment on foreign reports. However, a military spokesperson says Israel believed the target struck was a military building of Kurd force. So it wasn't a consulate. It was a military building of Kurd forces. Officially, the building is a consulate. That's what everybody knows. If you look at outside the consulate with a flag, it looks just like a consulate, like an embassy. The Israeli soldiers say that was not an embassy. It was a military headquarter of the Kurd. Does that justify an attack if you do not have proofs, hard proofs? Big question. The Israeli person continues saying that, according to our intelligence, this is not a consulate. It is not an embassy. I repeat, this is not a consulate. This is not embassy. This is a military building of the Kurds forces. This guy is a civilian building in Damascus. His name is Daniel Agari. Now, this is a big thing to do. You, you, as, as a per international law, this has never been done. Like It has never been done in the past. You cannot attack somebody in their homeland because that's an attack, direct attack on somebody's land that's declaring war. And in the name of pride and dignity, most people will go to war to safeguard their pride, even if they know you're much stronger, much bigger than them.
Now, the American intelligence say they know that Iran is preparing something really, really big in retaliation to the attack they've just experienced in the embassy in Damascus. Uh, the United States are convinced that Iran is preparing to retaliate to the Israel attack on Iran consulate in Syria. The U.S. has picked up intelligence that Iran is planning to retaliate an attack that will be a swarm of Sahel drones and cruising missiles. Officials say that timing and targets are unknown, but the proportional response to the Damascus attack would be hit an Israel diplomatic facility. The attack is likely to come between now and the end of Ramadan next week. We know the Muslim world is going through Ramadan right now. Ramadan is the fasting period where people don't fight, people don't do anything really negative they stay focused and certainly this is not the right time to fight a muslim country or anything like that but u.s intelligence say they know iran is preparing something very big i mean fellas this is very worrisome as much as we can say it earlier friday iranian president advisor mohammed jasmini posted on x that iran message to american leader was not to get dragged into netanyahu trap they also say that Iran will retaliate. They will slap Israel. That's what they say. They will slap Israel. This failure of the Israeli regime in Gaza will definitely continue, as well as these desperate efforts like what they did in Syria. Of course, they will be slapped for this action. Now, America also is not very happy with Israel. Very recently, apart from the many people that have, you know, in that war, very recently, there was a convoy of people, humanitarian people that were going through Gaza. So these people come from many places. Humanitarian people came through Gaza to give food, okay, to help people in difficulties, here food for you. And there was a convoy of these people going through Gaza and they were bombed by Israel and all of them were finished. All of them are alive. Very, very sad situation. I mean, seeing people that are trying to be human by giving food to humans, they're clearly not enemies or danger to anybody. Being taken out like that. America is not happy. Australia is asking for answers. They want Israel to respond. Is that, that this is beyond, uh, beyond any reasonable circumstance that someone going about providing aid and humanitarian assistance uh, should lose their life. The Canadian Prime Minister also wants answers because he believes this is premeditated. An Israeli airstrike on a convoy in Gaza on Monday unalived seven workers from the charity World Central Kitchen, including citizens from Australia, Britain, Poland. Now, many news say it's mistakenly unalived workers and promised a full investigation. But some other people say they did not respond, they did not answer. And some other people say, Israel Prime Minister said, well, these are some things that happen in war, you know. These are just mistakes that happen in war. And the Canadian Prime Minister doesn't believe that it's, he says it's not a mistake. I have to directly take issue with what uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said yesterday when he said, well, this just happens uh, in conflicts and in wartime. Uh, no, it doesn't just happen. Joe Biden is very angry about that. They had a 30-minute phone call with the Israeli president. President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister on the phone that the U.S. policy on the war in Gaza will be determined by whether Israel takes a series of specific concrete and measurable steps to address unaliving civilians, workers in the territory. Now, many experts are saying, well, sounds like Joe Biden is coming very, very hot against Israel, which is very unusual because they're very good friends. Some experts believe this is a lie. It's just a way to save face of America, facing something that's really not justifiable. These are what some experts believe. Uh, well, it's very easy for America to say, well, you, you need to fix your aim correctly or we're not going to support you but in the meantime behind the closed curtains they shake hands and they go like yeah well done some experts believe by analyzing those aid workers it's a way to send a message to people say do not come to gaza to help anybody we do know that many people came forward asking israel to allow helpers to allow foods to come into gaza to allow water to allow medication medicine for children women and elderly people 
And Israel was not up for that. We also know that America and the United Nations voted against that. We know that Naledi Pondo spoke very hardly, very strongly about helping Palestinian people. And she was bashed in many ways. Now, many experts believe Joe Biden sending a warning to Israel is something laughable because according to them, they are two wings of the same bird. It's just a way to look good in front of the world. Now, this is what critics of Israel say. Benjamin Netanyahu is already promising a response to Iran's response. Whoever hurts us or plans to hurt us, we will hurt them, he said. Critics of Israel conducting this war, and there are many, this is what they say. Say the aid convoy attack was not, a, was not an isolated incident, that in fact it is a result of a systematic disregard for the life of anyone other than Israeli soldiers in Gaza. The Israelis are trying to say that this was a very unfortunate incident that should have never happened. They are saying senior officers have been disciplined and this is now dealt with, meaning they've punished those people that gave those orders. But that doesn't deal with the wider question of whether there are real problems with the way Israel army fights, which has resulted to many unaliving of people, about 32,000 Palestinians. And the question is whether or not there is something systematically wrong with the way Israel military acts in Gaza in terms of respect of international humanitarian law, because it is proven they are systematically breaking the rules of war. Critics say if this is an isolated incident of them bombing workers, what about the other people, the 30,000 people that have been unalived who were just a normal human being? Innocent, children, women, elderly people. How do you justify that? 